Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And how are you? We're back with Artist and Their Pets, and we're on to David Hockney. Working our way through almost at the end. And as you see, it says David Hockney, Bold Brit. So that's given us a little clue that he is from the UK. He is British. One of the leading artists of the 20th and 21st centuries, David Hockney constantly experiments with different subjects and materials. Among his most famous works is his book filled with paintings of his dogs. Oops, sorry. See him carrying, and he's standing in front of one of his um, pool paintings, which he was also quite known for. The fourth of five children, David Hockney was born in 1937 and grew up in Bridlington, Northern England, in a working class family. At 11, he won a scholarship to Bradford Grammar School, but because he already wanted to be an artist, he deliberately failed his exams as only students with the lowest grades were allowed to study art. He left there at 16 and went to Bradford School of Art where, unlike his grammar school days, he worked extremely hard. He remembered, I was there from nine in the morning till nine at night. Kind of feels like how I'm working these days. Nine in the morning, nine at night. Oof. At 22, Hockney began studying at the Royal College of Art in London. There he met American artist R.B. Kitaj, who was studying art in England. Many of Kitaj's ideas influenced Hockney, and so did several important artists who visited the Royal College, including Francis Bacon and Peter Blake. I haven't heard of Kitaj, so it's be fun to look up. While still a student, along with Peter Blake, who became a good friend, Hockney showed his work in a London exhibition called Young Contemporaries. It attracted a lot of positive attention, and when he left college, John Kasman, a London art dealer, put on an exhibition of his work called David Hockney, Pictures with People in. It was a sellout, and Hockney became celebrated as a new and exciting young pop artist although he insisted that he was his art was not pop art. So pop art's like what Andy Warhol does, um, art that's generally made of popular imagery. Um, I think it just was like a term that might have been tacked on a lot of contemporary art at the time. So I think I'd agree with him. It's not pop art. From 1961 to 1963, Hockney created a series of images after some famous 18th century pictures made by William Hogarth called A Rake's Progress. Hogarth's pictures are amusing, but underneath show how deceitful, um, deceitful, how deceitful many wealthy people were at the time. Hockney produced 16 prints that tell a moral story about similar problems in the 20th century. In 1969, Hockney made etchings to illustrate six fairy tales from the Brothers Grimm. I didn't know that, so I'll have to see if I can't find all six and show you on the screen. Find right out. Okay, sorry, the cats are out here. I'm making sure they're still here. After his first solo exhibition in London, Hockney went to Los Angeles, California, where he discovered the brilliant light and sunshine. He began using acrylics for the first time, using the bright colors to express what he saw. He also used vibrant, vibrantly colored crayons. Over the next 40 years, he lived in California for most of the time, teaching at various universities, including Berkeley and UCLA. In California, Hockney painted colorful images of swimming pools that gave a great sense of peace. The shimmering heat, the sparkling light, sometimes there's a hint of a person in the pictures, but nothing definite. He also painted many portraits of friends, bold pictures that in some ways are like traditional portraits, but in other ways are different and original. He also designed sets for the ballet, opera, and theater. Looks like a lot of artists dabbled in that. <laughs> Before returning to Europe, Hockney went to New York and visited Andy Warhol's factory. They became friends, and they both became famous. Another reason he might have been clumped in with pop artists, because he was friends with Andy Warhol. From 1968, Hockney painted several double portraits, working from both photographs and direct observation. Usually one of the sitters looks at the other, who looks out of the painting. 
From 1970 to 1971, Hockney painted his friends, the fashion designer Ozzy Clark and his wife, textile, textile designer Celia Burtwell. Sitting on Ozzy's lap is their white cat, Blanche. But in the title, Hockney renamed Blanche Percy, the name of one of Celia and Ozzy's other cats. Mistake or intentional? You can see the painting here, the illustration of it, and of course, I will pop it right up there in the corner so you can see that too. From 1973 to 75, Hockney lived in Paris where he made a series of colorful artist portraits in crayon. He drew each of them during one session of three or four hours. The artist included his friend Andy Warhol and the photographer Man Ray. Love him. Hockney drove from New York to Los Angeles with a friend in 1967, and two years later, he moved to Los Angeles, at first renting a house and then buying it. By that time, he tried out numerous art styles and techniques, including drawing, painting, and printing, and several successful exhibitions of his work had been held. In the 1980s, woohoo, 80s, Hockney started making photo collages, taking quick photos with a Polaroid camera and then arranging them to create one layered image. In 1983, he began a series of self-portraits that showed his outward appearance and his inner character. Since the start of his career, Hockney has painted everything around him, around him including where he lives, still lifes of objects, including packaging and tulips, and portraits of relatives and friends. From 1993, 90s, woo <laughs> he also painted his two dash huns, Stanley and Uji, in natural poses. Stanley was named after the 20th century comic actor Stan Laurel. Uji was called Buji because he looked like one, Hockney recalled. When I got little Buj, he was very small. I put a bell around him so I knew where he was. So cute. Buji and Stanley. Hmm. In 1998, Hockney published a book of paintings and drawings of Stanley and Buji called Dog Days. He said, These two dear little creatures are my friends. They are intelligent, loving, comical, and often bored. They watch me work. I notice the warm shapes they make together, their sadness, and their delights. Later in the 1990s, Hockney produced several large-scale paintings of the landscapes near his house in America. At the beginning of the 21st century, he wrote a book about old master paintings, following his research and belief that they used a form of camera to paint realistically. In 2002, he moved back to Bridlington in Yorkshire, England. That year, he painted a portrait of a friend, the artist Lucien Freud, and Freud painted a portrait of him. Paint for painting. In 2012, yay, 20th. For 21st century. In 2012, Hockney had a huge exhibition at London's Royal Academy. A bigger picture featured huge, brightly colored paintings inspired by the Yorkshire landscape where he had grown up and had moved back to after so many years in California. The exhibition also included some of his recent iPad drawings and films he produced using 18 cameras that were displayed on several screens at once. Cool up here. Hockney painted a dog on a car in 1995. <laughs> Little fact. In 2013, Hockney had a slight stroke and soon after his studio assistant Dominic Elliott died suddenly. Sad and depressed for several months, Hockney did not paint at all. He returned to California for a show of his work in San Francisco. One day, he took up his brushes again and painted his assistant, Jean-Pierre Goncalves de Lima, J.P., with his head in his hands, resembling an 1890 painting by Vincent van Gogh called Sorrowing Old Man at Eternity's Gate. We'll compare those two here. He painted a portrait of everyone who came into his studio, including friends, relatives, acquaintances, and assistants. Everyone sat on the same chair in the same lighting conditions, and each painting was completed in three days. And again, that is the end. So, you know, um, I assume he's still living. Um, 
I'm not sure when this book was published. So the last date that we have is 2013. Um, might still be alive. I'm not sure. Sorry that I don't know that, but gosh, there's only so much space in my brain, y'all. Um, but I will let you know. And if there's any recent work of his, I'll put it right here. If not, it's just going to be me holding my hand up like I'm presenting my hanging strawberry plant. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, I think you've got a lot of options here if you want to do some art inspired by Hockney. You could, I think some, if you have a Polaroid camera or if you have any kind of like one of those little um, uh, handheld printers that prints pictures from your phone, you could print up multiple photos of yourself and then arrange them to make a whole portrait um, like his work. So I could kind of inspire you. Um, or you could do portrait paintings of your family or friends who are in your immediate area, maybe staying with you, you know, we're not going, uh, out of our way and we're observing social, uh, social distancing, but you could have your family members sit in the same spot, same chair, same lighting, and you could do a painting of each of them in like the exact same situation, but different person. So that could be really fun to see, and I look forward to seeing whatever you do come up with. Take care, and see you soon.